Hello, and welcome to Beyond Common Business Secrets. I'm your host, Tracy Watts-Sereno. And if you have been hanging out with us for a while, you know we've been having so much fun with the new segment, which is a deep dive behind the scenes, sort of like coaching the coaches. It has been an amazing journey, and we are so excited that we are able to bring so many new up-and-coming entrepreneurs just really ex sort of exposing the vulnerability of what female entrepreneurs are going through on a day-to-day -day basis. So I am so, so grateful to our guest, Lauren. Lauren, I'm so excited that you're here. And I absolutely adore you. Lauren <laughs> is the creator of Fortuitous Vila Day. And what I love is that Lauren combines so many elements of handcrafted luxury. She is such a visual artist, and there's so many layers to everything you're doing in your business that makes it so unique. So can you share with our audience a little bit about all these amazing artistic creations that you work on? Sure, I'd love to. And thank you, Tracy. I um I make a lot of different um, handcrafted goods, basically just inspired by anything, like inspired by, I could look outside the window and be inspired to make a painting or spiritual concepts and um, religious ideologies that are behind my art. I really tie in a lot of um, metaphysical and natural themes, as well as things that just make me, um, that kind of speak from my heart about it, about the art that I make. So yeah, that's what I, I do. love that. I love, love, love that. You're like the epitome of what I talk about all the time. It's like, do what you love, right? Like find things you love and make that your business. Like, so yeah. really realizing that like, hey, I have, the, you have this amazing talent for art and you're taking it and hey, I can like look out the window and think of something. I love this. Yeah, pretty much. So um, how uh, long have you been in business? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, how long have you been in business? I've actually started in 2019. So okay. right when the pandemic hit, um, actually um, the same time that I started my business, I'd actually uh, was just about to give birth to my two children. So I'd been practicing on my craft the whole time of uh, pregnancy. And it's like, um, I guess my pregnancy gave me a spike of creative energy. So I utilized that to help um, initiate me to get started on business. Oh, I love that. That's a beautiful thing, right? Nothing like the arrival of two babies to get you yeah. like kicking it in gear. That's, that's like, true. <laughs> that's like the, the strong female energy. I love that. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what currently have you been um, struggling with in your business? What I've been currently struggling with in my business, that's a good question. Um, I have been struggling with, um, I probably would say advertising as well as um, retaining clientele. And I learned um, along the way because like during COVID, I started my business during a really precious time, especially financially and socially. So I, I was really, um, I had to learn a lot about business boundaries because I wanted to make a lot of accommodations, especially being a, a new and up and coming entrepreneur. I wanted to be accommodating to the fact that this is not really a necessity, but it's a luxury. So I deducted my prices and I kind of lowballed myself. So initially that was a big struggle for me that I had to learn from. And um, yeah. And go, having gone, having gone through that, what's like, when you say that you had to learn from it, what has been your biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway is that because, okay, I noticed that I'd made probably two major mistakes within this. Um, so my biggest takeaway from it all was if, if you assert your price at the price rate that you want, people will pay for it if it's something that they value and that they like, um, as well as don't go too far out of your way to be accommodated to others because you also have to meet yourself. So I had to learn to, because I, I would often leave things on the back burner for people to um, then, you know, get their finances in order and pay for it later because I understand how things work. Yeah, yeah. of course. And so I had to learn not to do that. Like at least don't go so out of my projected due date of when I was expecting them to pay 
you know, before we uh, transaction, because sometimes I would leave it months in advance and mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I would leave it months for them, but I had to deduct that to about a week. Okay. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. Um. Okay. I think I have some strong opinions about this. Yeah. Love <laughs> to hear and, and here's the thing. Um, if you're providing a service that you are um, going to, you know, do a service for someone, you may, you may extend like a pricing, like parameters that come like during that time. It has been my experience that when you are selling a good, so a piece of art, any of the things that you're selling, like what's your what's your top seller? What's the number one thing you sell the most of? My my nail art is pretty much the top seller. Okay, so if you are selling nail art, if if you are sending it, you're shipping it out, you're doing all the the things, and they're going to tangibly have it in their hand, there has you can do a payment plan to be accommodating, but there has to be enough of a front end payment to cover all of your expenses. Yeah, kind of like a like deposit. Shipping. Yeah, do you see what I'm saying? Because it's a hard good. Now service, we can get a little bit more playful, generous, but I always say don't do it for long because the thing is, is that it is a luxury item and people that want it, they're going to they're gonna pay for it because they're into it. So that's the thing of like, one of, one of the number one things to think about, especially when it comes to being an artist and also an entrepreneur, is we have to separate who we are from what we're doing. So we can't attach a self-worth piece here. We have to separate. Like, I am worthy. I am amazing. I'm this great artist. This is the price. Because what happens when we're new in business, and it can happen at various levels, we we get a little bit vulnerable. And, and I mean, I was very insecure and was attaching like, oh, they liked it. They liked it. OK, I must be good. So it, it was very humbling to go through the transformation the first like five to 10 years in my career of like separating that. And over the years of training a lot of staff members and then other you know other people working in businesses it's really interesting when anything's art flares to the side of artistic we attach it's a part of our soul to it okay. and and that is where we want to honor this in okay. such a beautiful way because the more that you give it this vibrant energy of honor then that is what your potential customers will see and feel right that's true i agree with you i i yeah. actually had similar struggles myself as well yeah with the self-worth yeah so and, and and that's the thing of like that's why we call this beyond common business secrets this is all the the mucky stuff that people don't always talk about yeah, like oh it it's, very business. it's so exciting <laughs> It is. and it's like it is but there's so much that goes into it there's like a whole psychological piece and everything yeah and you're like oh no one told me that oh no one told me that and sometimes it's like you feel like you're just getting hit all the time like a ping pong you know like so, <laughs> it did feel like that yeah like so that's where it's really amazing to talk with a lot of other entrepreneurs and business owners and and understand that like this is just the phase that we all go through and the more that you can say okay like it's like setting your prices from the standpoint that you're profitable okay out yeah. of the gate and what this is a this is a, a huge 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 piece in the very beginning of any business is what you know it's like you have to look at all the things what is the time i spent what what do i charge per hour for my time what is the um the actual cost of goods and yeah it's almost like people always think you have to look at what are your competitors doing i think that's a problem because you do not know what their expense is like what if you use the most expensive gold foil to make your art that yeah. it's like the most expensive thing in the world your stuff cannot be compared to somebody that's using something that costs three cents you see what i'm saying as, as something to so yeah. it's the same thing of like like the housing market right like somebody might have this unique and beautiful home and the realtor is like 
I don't have anything to compare it to in the area because nothing is sold like this. There's all just been little ranches, but mm. this is like a palace at the end of the street. You know, you can't really have a um, a starting a starting price. That yeah. is my comparison. So it's difficult because it's like you're kind of trailblazing in a way. Yeah, and so you have to like right, and so but that also really in the luxury market makes a lot more sense. People that are looking to stand out and want something that is, oh my goodness, this is 24 karat gold. This is me. You know, that type of person is never going to say, they're not going to bat an eyelash. They're just going to be like, here's my credit card. So that's, I think that's the, the, the biggest difference because people that want a lower quality product, it's already available. Right. So we don't have to put ourselves in that same container, right? Like, so that's the thing of like really getting clear from a really mathematical sense. How much do I charge per hour? How long does this take me? How, what are all of the supplies? Can it be profitable? How many can I produce? Really putting yeah. it through the lens of your business, your numbers. Mm-hmm. When you have that number, then yes, you can kind of look to see what everyone's doing, but most people look and just come up with a number and that's not good in any business. Yeah, that's true. Cause there's a lot more factors that go into it. Yeah. Right. And so if, and this is why I'm saying this. So if you follow the strategy of what is everyone else doing? Okay. And you say, okay, well, this is the going rate. So I, my stuff is a little nicer. So I'm going to be a little bit more expensive, yeah. but you haven't done the math. Mm-hmm. What if you're already losing? What if you are bleeding money from the gate? That, and this yeah, is, I agree okay, with that. So <laughs> that is, so this is the thing to look at. And this is true in, in so many businesses. This is so, this happens so often when there's a lot of cost associated with creating what you do, right? Because there is, there's a lot of cost associated with it. You have to buy a lot of products. You have, you know what I mean? And the thing is, it's just not, and then it's time. And then you have to, be in the right mood and the right vibe to create. Yeah, so that, that there's a, yeah, there's a lot of variables and we have to kind of look through it through that cycle. Right. Um, that would be the first area that I would look at. I would get all my stuff and really get clear there. And if, if you, if you look at your numbers and you're like, Oh wow, I have been doing a disservice to myself and I need to change this. That's when you can come up with, um, like a rebranding for a luxury line within what you do. Yeah. Do you actually, see what I'm saying? Like, so <laughs> we're on the exact same page. I actually, I did meet that point within my business. I'm like, okay, okay you know, I'm actually lowballing myself um, because I actually semi agree with you on the looking at your competitors of uh, prices and project and products because you're right. You don't actually know all the fact the factors that go into where it is that their standpoint is set. And I did out of curiosity for a time, look at my competitors because I wanted to know like what, or get an idea at least of the price range of this particular luxury item. And when it comes to nails in specific, um, yeah. this is more so the cosmetic industry. This stuff can get really, really high up there. Absolutely. And so I um I would see people selling nail art that I had like similarly to mine that was um actually double the price of mine and so I was like you know I'm over here like kind of setting my prices a little bit lower because of you know covid and everything and just getting started just as like a a gateway to step into yeah. um because I was afraid that people wouldn't pay for it if I were to set it at the exact price that I wanted to sell it and I'm like yo these people are over here selling it for like $100 yeah, the same length, the same, you know, amount of probably time to paint it because like nail art is very intricate. It takes a lot of time to paint. So, so. let me ask you this. So okay. if nail art is your number one seller or your, your primary like client that you're selling to, is it to a like salon client or is it to a salon professional that would apply the nail art to the client? Like that's a good question. No, it's um, it's honestly just to an individual uh patron, basically. Okay. So whoever I um, I teach them how to, or I give them tips on how to apply it themselves. Okay, so that's what I was gonna say. So will they 
will they go ahead? So they'll pay for it. And then will they apply it themselves or will they pay for it and take it to a professional to have it applied? That's a um that's a good question. I actually it's just more so listed for them to apply it themselves. But I mean okay. if they wanted to choose to, they could definitely take it to a professional. Okay. Well, cause I think it might do you some some good to kind of clarify that. And um, you know, because if you're really if if you're really just looking at the individual person, like they have no background in nails or cosmetic industry whatsoever so you're just looking right. for a client um then then i would just be really clear about like your marketing can sometimes be like um you can have this amazing nail art you know without having to sit at the salon like that could you know what i'm saying that could be your marketing yeah. angle that really good. so once you really know you know because i i mean i had a very successful salon company for about a little over 20 years and had been in the beauty and cosmetic industry for 25 years before transitioning to coaching, speaking, you know, but I, I did all those things, coaching, speaking, you know, all that stuff, teaching within the salon industry. I just, um, you know, just wanted to spread my wings a little bit, but obviously the hair beauty industry, like it has my heart, but I know when you're really clear about who the end client is in that then it's going to be much easier to break through. So yeah. your marketing angle, if, if you're finding that it's going to be mostly people that are really into the intricate art and want something amazing, then that could be your angle. Or a lot of clients, this is going on right now in the salon industry, and you know I have a background, so like I'm privy to this. A lot of clients are not happy that nail that that the nail professionals don't mm -hmm. have the artistic skill set, but they love yeah. the salon they go to. Mm -hmm. So this is another really beautiful thing of like, hey, you love to go to your favorite salon to get your hair done and your, your um, you know, your color, all the things. And, you know, maybe the nail service you're getting is, is basic. This, you can mm -hmm. take this with you to up level, right? Because mm -hmm. they might already have this amazing place that they go and the only complaint, and they won't even tell you unless you know to ask, like, oh, right. I really wish somebody on this team knew how to do this, like, really amazing artistic nail art. So that's, like, another little packet I would really look at because that was an area that, you know, um, it was hit or miss always, all the years I um, managed multiple salons. Yeah. Because like people either have like I can train for the service, right? I can train for people to have an amazing experience, right? But the artistic piece that some people have and some people don't. So you're offering a solution that this is a huge thing that's going on in the salon industry across the, across the globe. So you know people haven't put in enough time to develop the artistry of it, mm -hmm. and this yeah. can be that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Actually, um, for a time, I did consider just like um, finding a salon that just needed a nail artist because me personally, oh. I don't need the technical application. I prefer to just get straight into the art. So, yeah, I guess well, there's and, somebody for everything. Well, and that's really interesting. I think that's a really amazing niche because I don't think anyone's really done that. In my experience, when people don't like to do the, you know, all the technical stuff of lengthening the nails, the filing and all that leveling. It's like a lot, it's a lot of work. It's building a house yeah. on your little finger. It's a lot. Yeah. Pretty like, much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that foundation has to be set and every, but if they find that they don't like that and they only like the artistry, they tend to leave the hair industry and the nail industry. So this, I think you found something so unique and really original. And I think if you can really just make some strategic uh, partnerships, referral connections, I, yeah. I think it can be huge. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that it, I'll definitely consider. <laughs> and you can ship all over the world. So, I mean, it, we're not even talking about just the U.S. I mean, like, think about it. Like, it, you can really globalize. Yeah. That's what I'm actually interested in. I would really like to go international because I've only had clientele in the U.S., more so in the middle midwest mm -hmm. mid state yeah so did you get your nail license 
No, oh, not yet. Okay. So, so really you've just stuck to the, okay. Just the artistry of it. That's okay. So that's yeah. amazing. So, um, do you find, do you think that this would be helpful for you to kind of just kind of think about your marketing angle in those two different buckets and see what you can come up with there? Um, well, you're asking like if I go get like the technical license or no, I'm saying if you, if you, um, reach out to salons that already have the technical stuff, but maybe don't have, you know, local in your area or something like that. It, it, it could provide a lot of photos, a lot of video of you in action, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that's like another, you know what I mean? Plus you can build some strategic relationships. Um, right. And the other piece would be the, uh, is the marketing angle of, you know, when you're selling online in, in the like social space, it's like maybe you're appealing to people that don't really like it was midnight and they don't have online booking. And so <laughs> I really wish I could just do it myself, you know? Like, yeah. So that's that marketing angle of, Hey, you don't have to ditch the, um, having these amazing, gorgeous nails. I can try them for you. And then you have training videos on how to do it themselves. So that's actually really good. That's a yeah. good idea. Those two points. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like those are like really um, going to be strategic for you. And mm -hmm. I would focus my time there. But the first thing before anything, and it's the boring part that nobody wants to do as a creative entrepreneur, you have to do the numbers. You have to pull all your stuff and come up with some hard numbers. Um, because if you're not clear about what that is before you go out and start pricing, you know, you could be working for free. And then yeah. I always say, if we are not profitable in business, we just have an expensive hobby. Pretty so much. Yeah. That it's is like not breaking fun. Even I get it. I'm always <laughs> like, oh, I'm done with that. Let's create something new. So I I'm no stranger to this. Um, at one time we found a $45,000 bleeding hole in mm -hmm. our color department at my mm -hmm. salon because we uh, weren't double checking um, the, the minimums and maximums of what was coming in. As, as seasons wow. changed, you know, maybe like you had a shift in clients, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like over time it stacked up. So it's, it, it was, these are little things that seem like nothing, right? Like, oh, what is it if I give a $5 discount? Well, it could add up to that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> when you see the number oh, like, that, you're like, oh, wait, I could have, a, like, I could get another car. Like, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? So yeah. do the, do the math, even though it's not as sexy and fun as creating the art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh, uh, so, um, so what other questions, like what, what else has been going on that I can help you with? Um, I guess, um, that's a good question. I'm not really sure more, maybe more so the division of like, because a big thing for me when I started my business is, um, I always had this thought that you can't combine your personal life with your business life or your personal social media with your business social media. And whereas I think that it is important to make differentiation, I I, I was worrying about like how to convey my like utmost authenticity within professionalism. And so I'd be open to like listening to any insight that you may have on that. Yes, I that that is that is a great question. That's literally why I wrote Beyond Common, The 12 Essentials to Success in Life in the Workplace. I'm thinking, oh, it's here. That that book right there. I the reason, So the reason I wrote that is because there was this shift in we want to be professional and present ourselves as the best self that we can. However, we're not talking about stuffy, fake, inauthentic professionalism. Yeah. You know, you, you, you can't like be an orange at work and then you're going to be a grapefruit at yeah. home. like it, it's too duplicitous. Yeah. So, so, and I, and I have to say that when I started my first business, you know, everything was about the business and I totally took myself out of it because I read all those leadership books. I attended all the seminars <laughs> and I basically felt like when I left everything, it was like, don't be yourself at all. You're not cool enough to be yourself. This is my takeaway. Don't be yourself at all. You're not cool enough to, mm -hmm. to be yourself. Just just be what everyone like what everyone expects. Yeah. And that was wrong. 
That was so wrong. And that was my interpretation of outsourcing my own skill set and truly being in alignment, right? So what what I would suggest is figuring out like, is it going to be that your name, like Lauren Carr, are you the overarching brand and you're going to create a lot of different mini businesses underneath? That's what I ended up doing. But that was a shift because I always had like, here's a primary business. And then I was like the tiniest dot under it. But then I had other businesses. Right. Yeah. So if you, so think about it like this, like you, um, you need to, if, if you, if you look at what's happening in the world right now, people want to do business with who they know, like, and trust. Even brands, like they're so, the people that are like major brands, I'm just thinking of, like, think of a car company. If all they're doing on their social media is showing cars, they have, their clients don't care. They're not having, they're not growing a a cult following, so to speak. They're not growing (laughs) people that actually care. They're just like growing like, oh, I'm going to go buy a car. Duh. Like it's, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I see. It's it like works. That's the difference between like the advertising where you see like the families and, and the cars. Yeah. And, and they're like, like taking you in a story, right? So that's the thing. You can be super professional, but maybe it's showing your nail art in action. Maybe just like what we said, going and making those strategic connections. Maybe it's showing people how to apply this because you might have, I'm just thinking of this too. You might have half a dozen salons in your area that currently have clients that ask for nails, but they don't even employ a nail tech, this could be a solution. Okay, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you could come in and demonstrate how easy it is as a retail item, you know, for that, whatever, something like that. Is it, but you can demonstrate it in action. The, this luxurious client, and, and I have no idea if you actually have the 24 karat gold like that I created, but <laughs> what at, like, so the thing is, if, if you had something like that, an idea is like show that person of luxury with a very expensive handbag and a very expensive car because that's the person that's going to want that type of really extreme art, right? Right. That's true. Like that's yeah. going to be like um, if you create something like that for, um, oh, my goodness, like Kim Kardashian. You see what I'm saying? Like something yeah. that yeah, so, I was thinking like, like that feeling of it. Yeah, I like the graphic arts on like the big brands like Louis Vuitton and yeah. like Coach. Yeah, yeah, those are pretty cool. Yeah, so like put it in action. Like it's like what kind of woman would want to wear that and show her doing something? I mean, like little things. It could be like at the at your desk, like, you know, typing the keys on the computer, yeah. um, stirring tea, right? Like yeah. chopping up veggies for your kids. I mean, you can make it real life and really professional. That's a good idea because like I was actually, I met a woman uh, probably sometime in 2023 um, in November, a few months back, she had uh, um, contacted me through a family friend and she said like your art, your nail art is like perfect for what it is that I'm interested in. She loved the colors. I incorporate a lot of like, um, you know, childlike and colorful themes. So she was really intrigued by that, like a lot of glitter, a lot of like unicorn-esque things. Yeah. And, I should, um, I could probably contact her to maybe advertise for me. That would be awesome. Yeah. That's see? a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And or oh, you even, just gave me another really good idea. Like yeah. another really cool idea could be to get that sort of tween age, the tweens that like to do fun parties. That right. could be super cute. That is cool. That Glitter is really unicorn. Cool. Like that could be yeah. so fun. I'm that's like, true. I would totally, I don't have any girls. I would <laughs> Like I have boys, but like yeah. that sounds so fun. Like fun. so, it's kind of like a party type of thing. Like they buy yeah. X amount of them for they're gonna have ten friends, whatever. Yeah, anyway, so that's like another bundled package you can look at. That's really smart. I um, I did start off with the idea, like um, I toyed with the idea of like bundle packages, but more so for like BFF nails. Like I, you know, the whole idea with like BFF charm bracelets and BFF. Yeah. Necklaces. I yeah. think that would be cool where like one person's finger matches the other person's finger or they just have a matching set in general. Yeah. So, that could yeah. Be too. yeah. yeah. That well would be fun I for think... twins too. Like for twins, like that would be really fun. Ooh, that's true. That's a good idea. Also, I, I feel as if this might be a hit around like school age teachers like that teach like really little kids. Yeah. Because like 
whenever I have my nails all decked out, my kids are always like, ooh, I like to paint food on my nails. I don't know why. But they <laughs> one time when my child was teething, he chewed on it and he thought it was real. <laughs> he thought it was like a watermelon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, baby, don't eat that. It was so cute. Oh yeah. yeah. So the yeah, the 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 thing is is that there is so much potential because this is such a it's like you already have your niche. You don't even have to think through that stuff. Like it's there. It's just finding the pockets of where you would align the best. Yeah, that's true. And I guess like for me right now, I really want to, and like, because I started off just predominantly nail art, just because I had the long standing vision when I was six, I love nails and I would go to Claire's frequently and I would always like put on like a big part of like what made me happy at the end of a very long school day at the end of the week would be going to Claire's and just getting the cutest press on nails to wear. That's and, um, <laughs> and so I started learning a lot about that, like the technical application of it all. I was told myself, I'll take this information with me later. It's like my, my younger self was helping me like pave, like giving me a little. Future. Yeah. 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 And so I took that with me, but, um, and I still love it. And I, I'm glad I finally got the vision out of the way because I really wanted to do this when I was 16 but 19 is also okay. However, yeah, it's like, I feel as if I got, I it's something that I still would like to put energy and effort into, but it's more so something that I have already given, given birth to and kind of, you know, gotten out of the way. Yeah. But I want to start to bring in other er, like areas of my artistry, like um, portraits and like accessories. Like I've actually tried selling some phone accessories and it's gone pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just like, that I want to be a hot to topic. The forefront. Yeah. I would say like phone covers would be a great, would be a great thing for you. I would buy one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's the, what's it called? I haven't gotten to painting the cases yet, but do you know the little phone wallets that you kind of like stick on the back of your phone? That oh, you carry yeah. credit cards? My son is an artist, my little one, my 10 year old, and he does a lot of like painting cases. He just for fun, like he just does. And so that's why I just, my brain initially went to the cases. That's really cool. I'd love to see some. <laughs> you, the other thing I was thinking, like, so somebody like me who doesn't, like, I don't like acrylic nails. I have thin skin. It's like, a, it's just never been my jam. But I have just been recently getting into the stickers. Oh, okay. So if yeah. you could design stickers, do you see what I'm saying? So that's another way like so since you already you know what I mean you gave birth and put that one division of your business out into the world could you go to the idea of those little sticker things for people like me that want real convenience at this point which is crazy because yeah. you know yeah. they're owning salons <laughs> but I'm like I would have done the stickers then if they had them because they used to have to chain me down to get me to get my nails done oh no <laughs> but all of my team always wanted me to have my nails done because they would get lots of clients so yeah. you know, it was like kind of like that thing I would be chained down for a minute not suit the nail <laughs> just to get nails on you That's yeah because I'm just too too active right so um, yeah I'm so maybe saying. like looking at different accessories yeah there's there's so, so many smart. aspects so I would go back to um the clients that you've already served mm -hmm. and survey them like okay. ask them what other products that they would prefer now you know because like then you have like a built-in you know audience like that's how you get retention it yeah. built in it's like you know what I mean it's because when you're when you're doing products that you know people don't buy all the time you, you've got to come up with ways to get them to be repeat you know buyers and yeah. just asking sometimes it's like a survey you know what I mean that's really that's a good idea I think yeah because that then, then you're that. making stuff like that you know you can I mean you can also of course in stories on social like you can ask what people want um you I'm can do about a lot of research poll, maybe yeah on what the best selling things are right now like so they always i mean it's at the start of the new year but they do that a lot where it's like okay this is the hot sellers right now and maybe um if those are if there's a real hot item that you know you can apply some of your art to i mean that that's no brainer yeah 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 that'd be fun yeah yeah, yeah. it's exciting <laughs> yeah, it is. It. i think yeah. i'll um i'll probably try it and go ahead and do that
like I really want to go ahead and make a poll and see what um, people like how people interact with and what they have to say. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, I'm so excited for you. So, um, do you, was this helpful for you? Um, this was really helpful. I'm sorry, my kids. No, I, hey, this is this is real life. Um, okay. well, follow Thank up you. with us and let us know what's working, and I'll include all in the show notes all of your contact information.